Damn noisy. Okay, so I know that some of you are good in recursion already. Some of you are still struggling, evident from your telegram messages or your emails. And some of you have simply haven't touched your assignments yet or haven't touched this thing yet, or perhaps haven't been following up what's going on on lecture for the past three weeks. Who knows? That's a possibility. So I think for now, uh, I, I really need your, your, I need to, wow, okay, not bad. Finish assignment early, not bad. But for those of you who haven't, I, I, I want to get a gauge, lah. like you can go to participants, right? And you know, there's that those buttons, right? Yes, no, go slower, go faster. So like, uh, help me understand you guys. If you uh, press yes, if you have touched a recursion question in your life and press no, if you ha don't know what recursion is. Can you all press? I wanna I wanna get a good idea of everyone here. Lah. So in my earlier class, like there's like around 50-50, 50% have actually touched the assignment and 50% of you have touched the assignment, 50% of you have haven't. Okay. So I think I still have only have like 12 votes. How about the rest? Have you guys actually touched any recursion questions before? So only three people have uh. Ten people have. Okay, you can go to participants and vote. Press the button on yes or no. That yes if you have touched a recursion question before. No if you haven't. Okay. The numbers are climbing up. Alright, so around 12 of you have touched a recursion question. Five haven't. Okay, so now for, for the 13 people who are who answered yes, right? Um, can you answer uh, if you if you have touched recursion and you can do it, then stay yes. If you have touched recursion and confused and doesn't know what the hell is going on, please change to no. Okay, now I see the numbers starting to drop. Middle ground, middle ground, I consider no, because middle ground is still shaky. I would still say that you don't really get it. Oh, the number drops to three. <laughs> Not different from my previous class. Okay, so since most of you are still confused, so here's how I'm gonna... Okay, okay, before I start, I, I just wanna know. Okay, for those of you who change from yes to no, right, can you perhaps share in the Zoom chat, like, what are your struggles? What do you understand and not understand? I really need your opinion here. I really need your opinion here because that's for me to figure out what's going on. Lah. For those of you who changed from yes to no earlier, right? those who have touched a recursion question and cannot answer, what were your problems when you are doing it? Share it in the chat, please. If you, you are uh, shy, just maybe personal message me in the chat. How to use a recursion to solve a problem? Um, the okay. Overthinking. Anything else? Ooh, that's a bit dangerous. Trial and error. I mean, yeah, coding is trial and error, but okay. Anything else? We have three. I think there's like around eight, five to eight people. Some questions quite obvious, but some not straightforward. Like I know that recursion requires us to call the function again, and I understand the factorial one. But when it comes to binomial, mm. I okay, okay, All right. So I guess everyone can see that recursion is a problem. Everyone is suffering together in recursion, so it's perfectly normal if you guys feel lost. And some questions quite obvious. Yeah, I I I agree that some, some of them like the function or formula are just immediately given and some are not that straightforward. So I think uh, the best way is actually to actually do a, an actual question here. 
so here what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use this question from part 3 as a sample. Lah. Uh, please don't bother the notepad. Uh, I'm just like giving, so it's just giving me a white space to write on. Okay, so okay, um, for those of you who uh, have, uh, who, are, who already understood how that's right, recursion work, how to come up with recursion work, kudos to you. But uh, today I'm gonna focus more on like how, maybe like re explain how to come up with a recursive function. I know my explanation is not so good, but I do hope that it sheds some light to those who are still confused. So for those of you who already understood, just like take your time, uh, join us in our voyage. Well, the rest of you, uh, please let's let's learn together, okay? Because I'm teaching this for you. So um, I wanted to start with the factorial problem first because actually that's the easiest. I want to start with the factorial problem. Given a positive number n, right, which is defined as this, it, it, it is n times n minus 1 factorial. So in the case, like my favorite example is 5 factorial, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So in an iterative formula, Remember, you usually have a variable, say um, variable answer. Now, because it's a multiplication, right, I would give it one. Because if you put in zero, right, anything you multiply by zero will be zero. And then basically for i in range from one to five, but because the n is exclusive, I'll plus one answer is equals to multiplication is equals to answer multiplied by i and then basically you return the answer okay okay that's so um this is actually our iterative formula so we can know that we usually recur, uh, iterate the, the value of i changes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, when it comes to recursion, right? Recursion, I think it's slightly different. I think the first thing that usually people find difficult is that how do you actually iterate through the numbers? Now, because it's, recur now, because it's recursion, right? I think from now, I'll just say that in terms of recursion, right, in most of the times, you iterate from the back instead. So instead of going from 1 to 5, right, you iterate from 5 to 1. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'll explain the reason later. So I think this is the first mindset that you kind of need to get. Like. Second of all is that perhaps what you want to do is that you... Let me write the function first. Def, uh, As you can know, right, recursion is about, uh, who said it? Uh, uh, recursion it requires us to call the function again. So let us call the function again. Now you can see, right, this is actually very, very problematic. When I call factorial n, it will give me this factorial n again. And then it will give me factorial n again and again until non-stop. There are a lot of problems here for, there's a lot of problems here for once, this doesn't change. So it's just like keep on repeating itself like a broken radio. Second of all, it does not terminate. It doesn't end. So I think what we want to do here is like we'll fix some of the problems first. We'll fix the first most obvious, first most dangerous problem is that it cannot terminate. I think that's very bad that it cannot terminate. Hence, what we want to do is we create a condition where it can terminate, okay? If something, then return, return something. So if something, you return something that does not call itself back. Then, else 
return the call. Okay. But then if you check again, right, if you actually run the code again, it will actually repeat the same problem. Because the problem is that, say I have fact n, right, I insert the value of n, and then say I don't fulfill this, then I'll go to else and it will give me this again, fact n, and it will keep on repeating till the end, which is not what we want. Lah. So ideally, right, in an ideal situation, or in, a rec uh, in recursion, right, um, what we want to do is that the value in this particular, uh, the value here, right, should also change. Okay, now figuring the value that now figuring how the value changes, right? Maybe the tricky part lah. Now maybe when it usually right, uh, when it comes to numbers, what you wanna do is reduce the n lah. You can always increase the n or reduce the n. The point is it needs to change. In this case, remember our rule of thumb where we actually iterate from the biggest to the smallest. So in this case, I will replace that with n minus one. So that, that my number gets smaller. All right. So I got it correctly. So like when I put n is five, um, it will actually give me a. Uh, When I call factorial five, it will give me five, and then because minus one, it will give me four, three, two, one, and so on until negative. Now, if we can see right in a factorial in in the good scenario, we kind of want just want to stop at one lah. So we can do like if n equals to one. Then just return one. Maybe some of you would say, like, eh, the question actually mentioned that the value of zero is one. Sure, if you want to do zero also, that's also perfectly fine. But then it returns one. Hence, when it arrives here, right, it does not give you back fact, but it actually gives you one. Hence, it stops. But then this does not solve our problem. We already successfully iterate through the numbers, but then we cannot. We kind of need them to multiply. Hence, we add the multiplying factor in front. Basically, we add n over here multiplied by factorial. Hence, this will expand as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on until the base condition is just 1. Lah. Okay. So, that, there you have it. Uh, what, how you actually come up with a recursion, recursive function. If you can see here, right, now explaining why we should move from back from biggest to lowest, right? Because when we deal with recursion, right, um, basically, if you, this part over here, right, this part of this part over here, right, it's called a base case. Basically, it is the scenario where like your code needs to stop iter stop iterating, you just need to stop. Now, the problem with recursion, right, is that the base case is already defined inside the function. Unlike in an uh, iterative version, right, where in an iterative version, the base case is actually, or um, you can set the end point, right, depending on the input, the function. Depending on the input, you can actually define that. Lah. Okay, but we do not have that kind of privilege in a recursion. In a recursion, the endpoint is already defined. Hence, that's why we usually want to find one point that, you know, every single case, right? In every single case of n, the n will be visited, which is in most cases, right? When it comes to numbers, it will be either zero or one. In case of a string, it will be an empty string or anything else. Lah. Usually it's the very base case. Lah. For those of you who have done mathematical induction, yeah, it's kind of the same base case. So in this case, we want, when it comes to recursion, right, you usually go from big to small, from right to left. That's how you do recursion. 
Now, maybe some of you may be confused. Like, why am I doing factorial? Uh, because like factorial is actually pretty straightforward here. You guys can do it yourself. Because like coming up with the steps of factorial is kind of like the build stepping stone for other problems as well. So um, before I move on to the next question, which is some, are there any questions? Like if everyone's good, maybe give a thumbs up. So for the question, the zero factorial is one we have to add inside as well, is it? Yeah, yeah. So it will be... All right. Yep. So in this case, like, you can actually do this as well. So n equals to zero. Because we know that, because remember right, in, in this scenario, um, yeah, mm, factorial zero is equals to one, right? Okay, and then factorial one is uh, one times factorial zero. So this is kind of the official base case. Normally we don't care, right? About factorial zero. Yeah, when it's yeah, yeah like in, in terms of factorials, no, we don't give a shit. La. It's just that it's a official formal definition. La. So when it comes to some problems, right? Um again, we are, we can start with the iterative question, which I'll write in red. Def sum. And I, I think you guys can read the problem right on the screen. I'll just go with it. So what we want to do is like we have a variable to count to sum up everything. It's just like the burger problem, remember, where you just, there are several ingredients and you want to sum them up. This one is like we have uh, multiple integers and we want to sum them up. So like we have like answer equals to zero. And like iterating for every digit in n, I want to answer plus digit, and then we simply return answer. So in a recursive way, it's basically a we need to take the character. Now, this one is slightly different because this is not numeric. Say we have this number over here, so like five, five, two, six, three, four. So in this case, right, uh, uh, it's not numeric. It, it's um, we usually move from back to front, but in this case, this is one of those cases where you can actually take from the front to back. So remember the last week's burger question, right? What we want to do is take one number and basically uh, take one number, count it, take one number, count it, take one number and count it. So that's what we're going to do. Lah. First, uh, we'll just write our base case first, but we kind of not know what's the best base case. Return zero and oh, oh damn it i sorry i pressed the wrong button def if something return else now in the case of uh, the earlier number what was it If you notice, right, 5, 2, 6, 3, 4 is same as like 5 plus the function for 2, 6, 3, 4. And equals to 5 plus 2 plus the function for 6, 3, 4, and so on. So that's what we're going to do, lah, basically. We're going to return, take the first digit. Plus 
plus the sum of the leftover digits. That's how it works. Now, we might not know what's the base case yet. Lah. So we kind of can actually go through it by one by one. So um, remember from here, right? Uh, we have five, two, six, three, four function. Then we take, take five and function two, six, three, four, six, three, four, three, four, four, and then zero. At a certain point, we'll end at zero or a single digit. Lah. So then we kind of know that's the base case. Lah. That's where it should end. So like if n is a single digit, basically what you want to do is return n. Another alternative is if, if n is equal to zero, then return zero, which is actually technically not really different like, from this one okay so yeah these two questions are actually pretty good because like you know you kind of need to figure out a pattern like. these are these are some ways to do recursion so in general what you want to do when you come up with a recursive function is that first you want to come up with the base case you want to come up with the base case first and it is and base cases are not always one lah. Sometimes there are multiple base cases. Second is that uh, second is basically this statement over here lah, which actually comprises of two parts. The first part and the second part. The first part is your calculation. Actually it includes until here lah. The second part is the your recursive function call. Okay, I think the things to take note is that for recursive function call, um, you should kind of change the value of n. So that uh, there is like some sort of evolution if you would call it. And then basically the calculation is the, the, the answer you're trying to get. And base case is to terminate, okay? I know it's not clear, but yeah, I hope that's a helping stepping stone. Lah. Um, are there any questions first from this, from here, are there any questions? If there are no questions, maybe thumbs up. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions, Andy? Oh, okay. All right then. Because of that, let's let's try again, and let's try a different. Let's us try part two, which is your burger question, which. We kind of did last week, but in a recursive manner. All right. So, uh, okay. so this was last week's question, lah, where uh, we kind of need to calculate the price of the burger. Lah. For recap, uh, total is equal to zero for a ingredient in burger. Basically, you do an if, a lot of ifs, and then like total is equals to total plus a certain price. And then basically, you return total. Now, how may you want to do this in recursive? Now again, as you can see, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that you can actually always abstract a pattern. Lah. Like the price of a burger, BVPB, is the same as the price of B plus BPB, same as B 
plus V plus PB, P plus P plus P plus P. Okay, the same. So I think it's also one thing that to know, like when you are dealing with string, usually this is the way you deal it. Lah. Okay. So uh, I'll create the function. Okay, death burger price. Then again, our base case, which we haven't figured out yet. Else, now this is the part, la. like, um, I think this one is the difficult part. La. So, um, uh, anything is everything okay, Rachel? Rachel, are you is everything okay? Oh, sorry, I was drinking water. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess, yeah, okay. So I think there's a difficult, uh, yeah, I think there's a challenge here. So what statement do you come up with? Uh, remember that here we have actually conditionals. So I think let's start with that. That's a good starting point. All right, because like, let, we wanna uh, get the price of each for the each character, right? Wait, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, my bad. So remember in uh, recursion, we want to actually like change the value so that when we um, return burger price, when we call this, we don't want just to call the burger again, because like it will be a re repetition. So then we want to change it. We want to remove the first character so, to remove the first character, just do burger one. I don't know if you guys remember or not from your first tutorial, but this is how you remove the first character from a string. Okay, so then with this uh, function over here, right, we actually can say we have an input uh b p v b a b yeah okay lah. say a function this right it will give us will cause call, call us the function f p v b because it removes the first character and then v b and then f p but then this is a problem this is a problem because um it does not give us the price at all Ideally, whenever we remove a character, right, we want to add the price to it, right? We want to add the price. Hence, what we do is gonna we're gonna add the price, but then the price of this depends on what is the first character of the burger, correct? Hence, you can here right inside here. You can always create a uh, conditionals if else. Use the same block here to determine the price of the ingredient. After you determine that price, then you can simply write it here price plus the burger price but without the first character. Now actually, if you continue this right, uh, now if you continue this after F B right, it you will get an uh, F with an empty string, and then if you keep on continuing it right, it will be another F with empty string, F with empty string, F with empty string, and it will keep on repeating until the end. So we kind of know that this should be the base case, cause like you know when we try with other strings right, say like B P B it should also end up with an empty string. Hence, we kind of know that this is the base case. As I mentioned before, right, a base case should be something where like, for any input, right, for any input, it should 
be included in every single input. Lah. So if we can see, it actually occurred also here. So we kind of know that if the burger is an empty string, meaning that there's no ingredient, that's the terminating case. In that case, you should not be calling burger price anymore. And then basically, if the burger is an empty string, you return the price of, and the price of an empty burger is zero dollar. So that's how you come up with a recursive function for burger price. Are there any questions? In some time when you write the return for if and else, will it like give like how to say uh, like an error? Because like that time I got try writing return for if then it and the return for else, but they say the else part got error for the return. Uh I need to see it in the code lah. Like there's usually the error is not from the recursion lah, but from something else. But normally so it, should be fine, right, for the return for both if and else. It's okay to write in both sides, right? It's okay. It's perfectly okay. fine. It's just that I need to understand. I think one thing that you guys need to understand, right, is that recursion is not code, okay? It's not syntax. But re recursion is a method or an approach to solving problems. So recursion is not something that is exclusive to Python. It is something that is very universal that you can apply in other programming languages as well. And recursion is often used because it is simple. It is simple to use, it's very intuitive, and when you read it, you just understand. Because if you see a recursive question, it's just exclusive. Okay, okay, uh, there are questions. Like first, it's like, how do you do the string slicing? How do you code that in this case? Um, I mean, this one is back to tutorial one. Lah. Uh, so, uh, let me just clear some parts of the screen. Just a uh, refresher. If you want to take the first character, you simply put zero. If you want to take a subset of a string, then you do the colon thing. Lah. Since I want to just take, say I have a burger, B, P, V, B, right, which with this index, and I want to take from the second character onwards, means that I need to start at index one. And I do not need to define the end, because I just want to take it till the end. It's just, that's how you do string slicing. For string slicing, I recommend you to uh, refresh old notes. Lah. Can you explain how you derive the else part again for the burger? Oh no. <laughs> okay, um, will the solutions to the tutorials be shared with us? No, it will not. So take note. <laughs> it will not be shared. Sorry, can you explain how the... Okay lah, but the solutions of the tutorial is actually... Some, some of the solutions are in the, in the tutorial slides which is uploaded to Google and the cosmology, so that should be fine. Okay, how do you derive the else part again? Uh, can you specify how do you derive? I mean like, uh, are you confused of how you come up with, are you confused on how to come up with this part, this part, or the entire thing? So this one, uh, Okay. 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 So as mentioned before, uh, when in a recursive function, we wanna call the function back again, All right? Uh, about the error part, can you elaborate more? Okay. Okay. Can can. I'll do this after I explain about the. Someone asked about uh how to derive the green box. So in a recursive function, what you want to do is actually you call the function again. Lah. So where def f, you want to call f again. 
But then if you call Fn again, right? Um, you know when you call Fn, it will then return Fn. Hence, it will return another Fn. It will return another Fn and return another Fn. And this is not ideal, right? In the case of iteration, you know that the value of n keeps on changing, right? The, the, this one keeps on changing, iterating through. So what we want to do is that we want to change the value in this particular part, like, like fa to fb to fc to fd. And then to a certain point where, uh, you know, to a certain value, so a certain particular value here where it can terminate which is the base case and this particular base case right should be uh, valid for all inputs meaning right meaning say yeah say i have F A, F B, and F C. So it will re do a recursion, right? It will call certain function, certain function, certain function. But then everything, right, at the end of the day, will end up here at this particular base case. And this particular base case, right, will keep calling itself if if there's no uh, stopper in this case. Uh, the stopper is uh, this thing. Right. Now, how do you determine the value of changing, right? It's basically, I think the rule of thumb, the rule of thumb, right, is basically you want to make it smaller. You want to start big and then get smaller and smaller and smaller. So in the case of numbers, when you are iterating through numbers, what you want to do is like go for the biggest number and go smaller, 10, 9, 8, 7. So it's a minus 1. But sometimes it can be a minus 2, it can be a minus 3. But generally speaking, what you want to do is just like minus. In the case of string, basically, uh, when we say we want to make a string smaller, right? B, V, B, B, meaning that you just want to shorten the string. Lah. You want to cut some part off. B, P, B, or perhaps you can do B, V, P, or perhaps you can cut them both off and do this. This one is like F, B, Something like that. So that's how you come up with the second part. Lah. About the arrow part below the else, or oh, the arrow part, right, it's just basically an, it's just an if else statement to determine the price of the first character. Remember that in this case, right, in this part, um, the burg we chop off the burger from VPB, right? But then if you just chop things off, you don't know what's the price of P. Lah. Uh, the B. So hence we need to figure out the price of B here. But then to figure out the price, you'll need to do a lot of if else statement lah here. So you use the if else statement to determine the price here. Uh, no. uh, so basically we just copy from the creative method the if else pass into the request part. With, with slight adjustments. With slight adjustments. Uh, you mean the total become a price? Is it? Yeah lah, and you don't, and you no longer need to sum sum it up lah. You no longer need to sum it up because the summation is done here. Uh, if we like if B and then we just write the price of B and then if B and then we just put the price yeah of yeah B. yeah. So I think visually right to explain, I think the prof has made a very good slide. Uh. So in this case, like this is actually the burger code. Lah. This one is on a more simplified one. Lah. If you can see right now, is um, if burger is empty, then price is zero. Okay, that's not that doesn't look right. Basically, this should be return. Okay. And then um, it does an if else statement. So see, like if the first character is B, then this is the price plus the function call itself. 
where this one is they only take like the, from the second ingredient onwards. So in recap, this is how, if you want to see, right, this is how you actually compare side by side like, between iteration and recursion. This is for the summation earlier. So like you have a base or initial value to start with. And then you have a, com a condition to stop. And then basically you do your calculations and etc. This one is for factorial, which is more clearer. La. But you have an initial value, uh, a stop, uh, a base case where you need to stop. And then uh, your computation, which is here. The N, the, co the actual computation itself. And yeah, la, the the what's the next value la? What should be the next value in this case is n minus one. I mean this one is if you can see right this is a while loop. That's why like uh, it needs to manually change the value of n. But in in the scenario of for loop right then yeah yeah simply like the for the n will keep on changing la. Okay, so I think with that. Uh, before you guys have any questions, I think I want to do one more example that's not in your tutorial. Uh, I want to do this as example. Yeah, let me send it to your telegram. Which tutorial is this? Tutorial 5, right? Okay, uh, I've sent a, a question in your uh, telegram. Oh my god, someone is not in the telly. Uh, okay, uh, so this is the question that I want to do. I think this one is a good question because like, first of all, uh, I think let's read the question first. Matchsticks can be used to make square grids of different sizes. So we can know that um, this is when n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4. And for n is 1, there are 4 matchsticks that is needed. 12 matchsticks, 24, and 40. Okay. I think these are one of the scenarios where, like, I think some of you mentioned, right, at some cases, who mentioned ah uh, like uh, Andy mentioned that some question quite obvious and some are not straightforward. These are the scenario where it's not pretty straightforward. You just like, mm, what the hell is going on? So yeah, um, we'll try to figure. Let's do this question, final question. So in earlier two questions, right? It's kind of it's quite straightforward on what's going on. And this one is not straightforward. So when it is not so straightforward, right? Your first step is that you want to figure out what is the pattern. You want to figure out that out first. So if you see, right, uh, we'll start with the smallest one. Like if n is zero, so we have this table. This is the value of n, and this is like the output. Riperino, for example. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. Relax. This one is CS 1010 s Not that easy. So when n is zero, I mean, obviously you use zero matchsticks. If n is one, you use four. n is two, is 12. n is three, is 24. n is four, is 40. Which is um, not helpful information, obviously. But then um, the first step is try to figure out a pattern. Lah. And if you can see, if you can see, maybe if you're good at math, maybe you can do like some skipping. Like this is plus four, plus eight, plus 12, plus 16. And then there's another step, like plus four, plus four, plus four. You know that there's some sort of pattern like going here, but then it's not clear. Oh, damn it. Oh my God. Oh my god, I forgot to charge my Apple Pencil, but let's try our best. 
but then it's still not clear, right? Uh, we can see there's a pattern lah here that you know, like this number. Yeah, sorry. This number here, right, can be derived from this number. This number can be derived from this number, and this number. Damn it. This number can be derived from this number. So what's the point here is that at F4, F4 can be created from F3 plus something. And F3 can be created by F2 plus something. And so on. And if you can see that there is some recursive pattern here. So what you should do next is, right, the second step is that after you kind of like have a rough idea what the pattern is like is that try to figure out how exactly is F4, how is Fn is made by F1, Fn minus 1. And for this, right, if you are not good at math, it's okay. Then you can simply figure it out from the pictures itself. If you can see, right, if you can actually see, if this is F1 over here, then F2 is constituted by F1 here. Right. Added by, uh, added by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 sticks. So say F1 is 4 sticks. F2 is F1 plus 8 sticks. And then we'll continue to the next stage. This is F2, which is here. Right. So F3, oops. F3 is equal to F2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. F4 is, if you can see where it's going, F3 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. All right. And then F0 is 0. So technically, you can, if you want to make it nicer, you can do F0 plus this. So we can see a pattern right, right now. Right. So... Basically, we know the base case. I'll assume I'll just write here base case. Else, we know return f n minus one. But by what number? Now, now we need to extrapolate the patterns again. If you can see right, one is with four, two is with eight. 3 is with 12, 4 is with 16. So if you can notice, it's actually, if you multiply it by 4, then you'll get the number. Lah. So basically, it's 4 times n. Hence, you get your recursive function. If you guys are lost, maybe you guys can give a thumbs up because I'm pretty sure I'm going to see a lot of lost people. Okay. Okay. There's some of you that are lost. Okay. Um. Basically, it's like that, lah. <laughs> I know that's not helpful, but maybe you guys wanna help, like uh. You guys wanna like ask questions, or like I can help somewhere. Like, if you guys got questions, just maybe like, oh, alright, someone unmuted themselves. Uh, how do we start with the code? Start with what? The code. So first we define five match state. Is it number of match state? Uh. Wait, I don't understand. I think um. Wait, what? I'm confused. <laughs> uh, how do you when? When we approach a recursive question, right, sometimes there's like no exact place to start sometimes. 
as you can see earlier right in the earlier questions in your tutorial question our approach was that like they already give a formula and then we just simply use that formula and derive our function but for this case right it's not clear like, what is the actual formula then we need to come up come it come up with it so there's like no one clear approach i think rather than can uh, rather than figuring out like how to start coding like perhaps like try to figure out the formula first is most important so in this case right uh in this case uh, i'll just erase this part this is not necessary anymore if you kind of need to find the pattern first lah, which is not easy like i understand finding patterns are not easy and it requires a lot of practice so like if you ask me how to find those patterns? Practice. Practice makes perfect. So yeah, def uh, numsticks uh, n n is basically the input here. This input, the size. Basically, we if n is equal to zero, which is our base case, right? Then return zero. Else return the, the recursive statement lah. Uh, the recursive function which is uh, which is in this case is num sticks n minus one plus four times n. Okay and I, I, I know that's not helpful lah. <laughs> oh, okay I, I this time I can understand. Uh, okay okay any other questions? If you guys want to ask in the chat as well, it's okay. But if you want to unmute yourself, feel free. So oh, like, hello. All the all recursive functions must have this base case, as in we must write if n equals equals zero, return equals zero. I right, return zero, correct? If, all, all recursive functions must have this. Like, all, rec all recursive functions must have a base case. Not necessarily n equals to zero, not necessarily return zero. Ah, yeah, yeah. Just, just that you need to have this base case correct yeah correct okay thank you oh one thing to add on sometimes there may be more than one base case just to add on lah so if there are more than one base case you simply just like add another else if statement if n equals to zero else if n equals to one so i think i just want to clarify that ah. so it's not necessarily that there's only one base case or perhaps like there's only one written statement there might be several base cases Correct. Shenwei is correct. You can just put n equals to one return for. Can you go through the answer for sum n recursive method? I have trouble converting string and it. Oh, go through the answer. Uh, I mean, you're sup not supposed to do that. Lah. I think I'll just show you because we're quite out of time. This is the the function for each sum earlier lah, the sum. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I'm so sorry, Ivan, we kind of ran out of time lah. But then, uh, with the, yeah. So, I think the next part is that I, I want you guys to try out the challenge lah. So, the is the final question in the tutorial basically uh yeah I, I want you guys to try this out um maybe you guys can take a like a screen uh do you guys prefer to do it in pairs or in team in pairs or alone maybe like if pairs like uh thumbs up clap for team alone Okay, like, I think uh, you can just do it alone, lah. Because I think I think you guys can benefit. So I'll give you guys ten minutes. So like at one one twelve, try to um try to come up with a solution for this, lah. And if you've come up with this as usual, just like uh, I'll create a code share post, a uh, code share link, and just save your answer there, lah. Okay. 10 minutes ah, you need carry, I'll carry you. 
Okay, for those of you who need to go to do something else, uh, just feel free to go to your business. But for those of you uh, who can still stay for tutorial, please um, try to do this. I mean, for recurs recursion, right? The only way to master this is a lot of practice. So we have two questions, the final sum and the Euler constant. And yeah, if you are, if you have questions, ask me. If you don't, then do it. Ten minutes, and if you're done, share it in Podshare.io. Uh, let me pause the recording first. Okay, I hope you all, uh, I hope you all really shared your code, hopefully. So let's, let's start, let's start, okay? Um, this is fun. Okay, um, first of all, we have this, uh, find E. I think there's a few answers. Code probably wrong, it's okay. I did not then use it in your... <laughs> It's okay. Um, it looks good. Okay. Um, I think this one is interesting. Um, because like this one is not this particular line, right? It's not put into here. Even though it's not, uh, even though like you do not call your own self, right? And you call it inside a variable. This is still somewhat considered recursive. This is still recursive. This one is still okay. So, so, but yeah, like if uh, I think what you want to do is just like remove this and simply move it here, lah. Okay. So, um, okay. Um, I think we'll see the question first. So yeah, lah. Um, we'll see. We'll start with Euler. So yeah, the Euler, I think we can understand that um, since as with the rule of thumb earlier, we want to start from, we start from the right of, right to the left. So we, we kind of know that this is the base case that regardless of the end value, there will be always this. So like um, x to the power of zero to the power of zero, which is one lah. So we know that when n is equals to zero, the res this should always return one. Okay. Other than that, it's just a formula. Lah. And I think this code really explains it well. Like, uh, like uh, here is the, your base case. And then this is your calcu step calculation from the so the end gets smaller and smaller, as you can see, which this one is correct. Lah. Like uh, use it in our own risk, which I'd say I'll take the risk. Even if there's any syntax error, I, I don't know. Lah. Like, I mean, this looks good to me. Okay. Next up is, um, the next question is the, I'm not so sure who write, wrote ruler. This is the iterative version. So, yeah, this is good actually. Uh, you start with zero. Basically, this is your accumulator. Then basically, while well, n is less than zero, so like from a big n, you move backwards and say like 10, then this will make it nine, eight, seven, six, five. And then basically this will create the chain. However, again, uh, personally, I would prefer that uh, I would prefer something like this to be done on a for loop, lah, preferably. However, I wanna uh, state for the record, right, that if you use while loop, right, during exams, you will not be penalized. Okay, it's just like personal preference. Okay, well done. I think the others. I think you get there are some other examples. Uh, summing. Okay. Uh, summing, yeah. Uh, oh. 
Oh, okay, two different functions. So, if n less than 10 returns n, meaning that this is this checks whether it's a single digit or not. Which basically comprises from 0 to 9. And then if it's not single digit, Yeah, I'm trying to understand what this is. Uh, I, I'm not so sure why you... I'm not so sure why you need this one. I do not think you need this line. I think that this is enough. Like, this alone is actually okay. This one is actually even... Wrong? I think this one alone is already enough. I don't know lah, but my feeling like if you do this, this, this line over line 24, right? It's just wrong lah. That's my feeling. So yeah. Final sum to... Uh, not so sure. Okay, this is good. Uh, this one is like basically like it sums up, sums everything up first, sum all the digits up, which basically can be represented as our earlier function of sum x, right? Then if like the residual is still like greater than ten, which is meaning that more than one digit, then you repeat the process. And if you can see here, right, unlike our previous uh, codes or questions. There are no add plus signs or no multiplication sign or there's nothing else because we know for this particular question which is pretty special it's just like want to repeat itself uh, and without doing anything fun which is good and i think what's very unique about this is that um okay this we have the base case here and technically over here is also a base case actually this is actually also a base case, if you guys are not aware. These two are base cases. So like, after you do the calculation here, if it fits the base case here, which is the opposite of the non-base case, right, then it will immediately return. So this one is actually pretty interesting. So for whoever wrote this, right, it's pretty interesting that you have multiple base cases. Yeah. Okay. Next up is the final sum. I think same. Okay, it's not done. Can't confirm wrong lemau. <laughs> okay, uh, final code. Uh, same lah. Uh, um, what will happen if you have two base case? Nothing lah. It's just that your code is redundant. Like you can see that it's pretty. The code is actually pretty long. I mean, like technically, if you do not have this, it's all also okay. Like technically, if you, I don't know, comment this part out, like your code will still work. Lah. It's a bit redundant, but nothing's gonna happen. Okay, so I think well done, all of you. Not okay, at least for those who submitted it. For those of you who don't submit, I'm not so sure, but I hope you guys learn like, how to come up with all these recursive and this. Now we only have 10 minutes left and I have two more things to you know, introduce. So if you guys got more questions on recursive and iterative, we can talk after the tutorial. I have plenty of time this time. So yeah, we can talk after the tutorial, the tutorial. but then I need to introduce on variable scoping first. Uh, for variable scope, uh, just uh, I want to do another simple vote basically on participants. Uh, just press yes if you've done, if you understand variable scoping, press no if you don't understand. Go to participants, press yes if you know, understand part one. Press no if you don't understand. Uh, 
uh, six yeses, four noes. Okay, lah, it means that roughly most of you should understand. Lah. I think this one is pretty easy, so it shouldn't be hard. So let's go. I have three questions here. One, two, and three. Okay. So, um, uh, I'll highlight some parts first. So we have a function box over here. Function box over here. Function box over here. And we know that functions, when you run them, nothing happens. Then there's a function call for who print x, print x, who print x, print x. Now on the Zoom chat, please uh, just let, let us start. Like on the Zoom chat, please type out your answer for question number one. On the Zoom chat, what is the output of uh, the code in part one? There should be at least, there should be two outputs because there, there are two arrows. There should be two outputs. Zero, zero. Not so sure why. Okay. X zero. Okay. okay. The official answer is it's supposed to be zero and zero. Why? Uh, I think for print x it's quite obvious because it will just search outside. For for full print x, let's evaluate. We'll run the yellow box over here and we meet with print x. Now what's gonna happen, right? What Python does here is that um, the print x over here will look for a value of x inside the yellow box. But as some of you actually pointed out, there's no x value inside the yellow box. So what Python does is that it does not give up actually. It does not give up. In fact, it will find the x value outside. And we know that outside there is an x value which is in this green box. Hence, it is zero. And this one is just simply zero. Right? Okay, second question. Uh, what's the output for the second question? Nine 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 zero. Okay. Zero zero zero. Okay, there are some answers. Nine 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 zero. All right. I think the okay. I think there are some interesting answers. There are there are those there are propositions of nine 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 zero and zero zero, and I think I'll just tell you the answer. The answer is actually zero zero. Why is it zero zero? Ah, uh, you see wrong. Okay, because if you can see right, we will run this line first. Full print x x, and we know it will find the value of x outside, which is here. So here I'll replace it with zero. Hence, when I go to I insert this to the yellow box, y will be equals to zero. Print y will find a y inside the yellow box, and inside the yellow box there's this y. Hence, it will take this y value instead of nine nine nine. Okay, zero, and then print x here will also will take this one. Oops. Oh no, su. Please don't su. Try your best, guys. Ciao. All right. Final question. Final question. What's the output for the final question? For question number three. There's nine 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 zero. Any other answers? Anyone wants to just give it a shot? Uh, I mean, like it's it's got you're gonna ask you this anyways, right? So like, you just better give it a shot. So yeah, um, the answer is nine 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 and zero. I think um, we'll run this part part first, and then inside here there's the declaration x is equals to nine nine nine. So this print x will print this. But then after the function ends, right? And after the function terminates, then the box should be removed already. Hence, when it prints x like this, right? It does not find 
this x, but it finds this x in fact instead. As the second x is zero. Okay, so the general rule of thumb is that first, uh, look up. The first rule is to look up. So I'll look up upside. So if there's a uh, any variables that is declared above me, then I'll take it that variable. But say if that the, the variable is not declared inside that box, then I'll look outside. But one thing that should never happen, right, is that you should never look inside. So once you are already outside, right, you should never look inside any function. Okay, that's the rule. So I think to simulate it, I want to introduce you to one new tool called Python Tutor. You can Google it. So Python Tutor actually does the visualization for you. So here I'll show you the actual visualization of what's actually going on under the hood in Python. So first we have x equals to zero. We declare it. So in the global part, in the global environment, we have x equals to zero. Then we define full print. So in the global environment, we have a variable called full print x, which points to a, a function object. And then we run full print x. Oops. Oh. Yeah. And then we call full print x because it calls a function, it will create a temporary frame. It creates a temporary local environment with no variables inside. And then it tries to print x. And because x does not exist in this particular frame, it will look for, for x in the global frame. And it prints the output. And it returns none. And then once the function ends, right, once the function returns a value, then the, fun the frame will disappear. And it will print x, go to this, and voila, print zero. Same case for the second one. We'll start with x, it declares x as zero in the global frame, declares y as 999 in the global frame, declares full print x in the global frame. And then when it runs full print x, it will temporarily create this box. And then it will assign y to zero because the input is zero here. Then because there is y inside the global, in the small frame, it will use that y instead. It will return none. Hence, because it already returns none, the box will disappear. And then when I print x, it will just print the outside. For the last one, same case, x in the global environment, full print x, because then inside it, I declare x as 999, print, right? Correct, and then return value. After I return, the box disappear. The x for 999 is gone. So when I print this particular x over here, right, this particular x is just gone lah. Like, there's only like one x left, which is in the global frame, which is zero. Hence, you get 9990. For those of you who want to try Python Tutor, feel free. It's very useful, for especially for future assignments. Lah. And yeah, apparently they have a Discord chat group as well. All right, I know it's already 1.31, but I have this one, uh, I have this, you know, like, as usual, there's usually a detour. Um, I'll short circuit logic. Uh, I'll go really fast on this one. This one, it should be very easy. So, so this one is like, uh, we have two functions here f1 and foo, where if we can, if, and yeah, if we evaluate this, right, this one will evaluate as true, because a is three, three is greater than one, so because it's on or, this one is also true, true or true is true, hence, if you guess it right, it should return yes, All right? And the question is, that I modify the code. Now I add print haha. -ha. Right, what should be at the output? If I run this right, I should evaluate this true, and then I should evaluate this true, and when I evaluate this right, it should actually print haha -ha during my evaluation, and then return yes. But the actual output is actually yes, and it might be confusing to you all. 
isn't it supposed to be haha -ha, yes and the, and what happened was that function f1 is actually skipped why it's because of the short secret logic so in this case this particular thing over here right, is an or what happens with an or right if you remember is that if you have an or what at least one value inside the or statement is true one value is true then you can this uh deterministically de de decide that the entire statement will be true but because we already know that the first statement is true right means that we don't really need to evaluate the last statement because we know that if this is true and it's combined with an or it means that everything will be true right? hence this will be skipped and this will be skipped same case with and in the case of and right at least like one value must be false to make the entirety false. So in this case, we know that this is false because like zero is not smaller, not greater than one. That's because it's false. We can deterministically de tell that this is false. Yes, this is skip. And it will print no. Okay, so if the left side of the logical operator can decide the output already, right, the light, the right side of the logical operator will be skipped. Okay, so it's quite intuitive. So there's problems are with this because of this short secret thing. It can actually dodge errors, right? For example, we have an undeclared function over here. So if it's undeclared, right, when you run this, it's supposed to produce an error. But because it is already short secreted here, it just stops here. Lah. So it's not good. So I think this kind, this short secret evaluation, right, you should remember this for your midterms or your finals, especially when you're evaluating code. Because this is actually one of those tricky parts where you think it's an error because you evaluated everything and it's an error. But then because of this uh, hack in Python, the short secret logic, then it will return an error. Yeah, correct. This one should be written a no, in fact. Because this part over here will be skipped. That's why it's, it's dangerous. Lah. And usually these kinds of things you need to pay attention during exams. Because during exams, they might actually give you this kinds of error, but then it's not an error because there's this short secret logic. Lah. Do we need to remember the actual term? I mean, it's just short secret logic. It's just like three words. Um, so like if the, the right side one is on the left instead, it will return error instead, correct? Correct. So in this case, ordering does matter. Any questions? Okay, are um, there any for the okay. previous one, the F1, so it will print ha ha on the left side also, right? Yeah, like if anything will print out. Yeah, if if this one is written as like uh, F1 and A equals one, this will be a value to first, then it will definitely print ha ha. Are there, okay, are there any questions for both the, uh, this one, the variable scoping and short secret logic? I think short secret logic is quite intuitive. Like basically, if something can be, can determine the uh, value of the entire statement, then basically the rest of the statement is no longer evaluated to save com uh, computational uh, resources. For variable scoping, it's a bit confusing. Do you have any questions for this? If there are no questions, maybe thumbs up. If everyone, I mean, if there are any other questions, uh, let's just talk about that at the end of the tutorial so I can end the recording now. No more, no more question? Okay then, uh, I'll just stop the recording now.